Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video. This is Damien from Edureka. In today's session, I will be talking about the difference between Apache Hive and Pick. But before we get started, if you guys like a video, please subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss out on any updates. Also, if you guys are interested in our Hadoop certification training, do check out the link given in the description below. So what we are gonna do today is we're gonna cover what is the need for Hive and Pick, what is Apache Hive and what is Apache Pick? Then we look at Hive QL and Pick Latin. That's the terminology for the languages. Then look at the Hive data model and the Pick Latin data model. Hive and Pick execution modes. Then we look at the Hive and Pick features. And finally, we will look at some of the few Hive and Pick commands. We'll start off with the Hive versus Pick. Now, as we all know, Hadoop uses MapReduce to process and analyze big data. Now, processing big data consumes more time using traditional methods. Now, Hadoop MapReduce was used to process big data faster. You can see the before process where we have data all over the place, each one doing their own little things, and it's really hard to track any one piece of data. So, processing big data consumes more time, and then with the MapReduce afterwards, processing big data was faster using the setup with the Map and Reduce. And there's a specific code that is your map reduce, although learning to think and using map reduce is just as important. So map reduce is primarily implemented using Java codes. Lengthy complex codes were written by a programmer to process data. This proved to be a disadvantage for users who were non-programmers. Now to overcome this issue, Hive and Pick were introduced. And you can think of your shareholders at a meeting or the CEO of the company they might know enough to write the programming script, but they don't have the time to sit down there and write 120 lines of Java code every time they want to look something up. So the first thing we're gonna start off is, why do we need Hive and Pick? Now, Facebook found it hard to process and analyze big data as not all the employees were well-versed with the high-level coding language. So you can imagine you have the manager who's working with all these different people. He needs to go in and do a quick query and he can't. The only way you can do it is to call the programmers and have them spot out their data to write the query for them. And then of course, if he's like studying something, that could be a real big problem. It becomes an R research and query into what's going on becomes days. So the solution they required a language similar to SQL, which was easier to write, hence Hive was developed with the vision to include the concept of tables and columns just like SQL. So just like your SQL query language, and you can see here, once they have SQL with Hive, you get a very happy guy solution. What's nice about putting Hive and designing an HQL to mirror the SQL is that a lot of people already know SQL. You know, if you do have a shareholders looking something up in the database, they probably know the basic select start from table from database. So the next thing we're gonna look up is what is the need for pick and where did pick come from? If that's where Hive came from, where did Pick came from? Well, similarly, Yahoo also found it hard to process and analyze Pick data using MapReduce as not all employees were well-versed with the complex Java codes. So just like Facebook was having a problem, so did Yahoo. And the solution there was a necessity to process data using a language which was easier than Java. Yahoo researchers developed Pick which was used to process data quickly and easily. The poor manager was sweating it out trying to find this information he needs to do his job. And with the solution pick, he is now nice and happy. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is what exactly is Hive? We've sort of talked about it, but let's go a little bit more in details. Hive is a data warehouse system, which is used for analyzing large data sets stored in HDFS, which is nothing but your Hadoop distributed file system. So here we are with the huge Hadoop file system spread across maybe 20 to 40 hundreds computers. And then Hive uses a query language called HiveQL. And a lot of times you'll see that abbreviated as HQL, which is similar to SQL. So they mirror each other that makes it really easy for someone who already know SQL, very common to come in and switch that query over to HQL. Especially when you already backing up a lot of your SQL databases, that may be running on your enterprise machines into your data warehouse. So you're already using SQL moving stuff over. So it's not a big step and it's very useful to keep those similarities. 
So what is pig? If Hive work on SQL, what does pig do? Well, pig like Hive is used to go over data warehouse systems and is used to analyze large data sets stored in the Hadoop file system. Now, where the difference is, it is about data flow and the data flow is then used to analyze the data in pic. So let's look at the Hive QL or the HQL. So we can see here the actual property of these two are Hive query language or HQL is a query language used by Hive to process and analyze data. Now declarative language which is exactly similar to SQL and Hive QL works on structured data and at this point let's go ahead and bring up the Apache website and since Hive is now a part of the Hadoop framework you can go to hive.apache.org. Once we're in the web page, you can look up Apache of the Hive on here. You'll start seeing reference for B line. You can go here on the language manual. You'll see the different commands. You'll see here Hive reference, that is the all, to the BE line reference or an edge catalog CLI. If you go under command, we'll look at more details in just a minute. You have the language for getting in and out. Out there as you go down and you'll see the basic Hive setup. If you go back a page, we can go down here and look at the data manipulation statement. As you can see data manipulation statement. There are reload, insert, update, delete. And once you're in here, you'll see that these look like SQL. So when you're loading the data, very similar setup. So it mirrored the SQL query language in them. But we have a Hive QL or the HQL. And then we have the pig Latin for pig. So pig Latin is a procedural data flow language used in pig to analyze data. So pig Latin is similar to SQL but varies greatly. It is used for structure, semi-structure and unstructured data. And your 10 lines of pig Latin code equals to 200 lines in Java. So we're looking at a map reduce for either one of these. We might be talking just a few lines of code versus a couple hundred lines in the map reduce. Java setup and just like we've looked at the Hive QL, let's go ahead and look at the Pick Latin and pull up their website. Just like we have hive.apache.org, you can go to pickapache.org. Now look at the open source and we can click here on get started. And then they have like the news or release and you can go in there and look at the actual script language. Say releases. Then if you go back to welcome. Then go to Apache, getting started, read the documentation. You can go in here and also look at the actual script language and we'll go down under the read the documentation which I've just done. Uh, you'll see an overview, uh, getting started and pick Latin basic. And because pick Latin isn't already based on something we know such as an SQL like HQL, it is a little different. You'll see here that you have some different setup and we'll look a little closer at when we get into instead of some other basic relation operators or commands. But you can see here there are a full line command in here and you can skim through all the commands. These are all the commands for pick Latin basic and some of them will look familiar like load you probably understand what limit is. You can limit your return to like top 10, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and drill down a little bit into the language and look at the Hive data model. So in the Hive data model, we have tables in Hive or similar to those in our DBMS. We have our partition tables are grouped into partition to group, the same kind of database on the partition key. And then we have a bucket partition which are further divided into buckets for better query. And what's nice about this is if you already have an SQL server running on your enterprise computers and you're backing up that data into your Hive setup, then you already have all your data and tables and everything defined. And that makes it a lot easier. Some query comes over, which is a few minor tweaks to alter it to the HQL. With pick Latin data model, we have what we call an atom. Atom is a similar value of primitive data type like integer float string, which is always stored as a string. And you can see here, we have a tet or 50. So it doesn't matter. The atom is going to store those as one or the other. And then a tuple represent a sequence of fields. It can be of any data type. It is same as a row in our DBMS. So you can see here, we have a string. We have an integer going in there tet 50. And that's a tuple. And then you have a back. 
A back is nothing but a collection of tuples. It is same as a table in our DBMS. It is represented by the brackets in here and then the map is a set of key value pairs. It is of the character type and value can be of any type. It is represented by the square bracket. You can see under the map how everything is kind of combined. So you have your name Nick, your age as 25. Then you have your back of your setup in there which is all connected to the atom, the tuple and the back. So let's talk about the execution modes. First thing we're going to talk about is Hive execution modes. Hives operate in two modes depending on the number and size of data. We have the local mode. It is used when the data is small and when one data node is present. You can look at that as you're only doing a small amount of data on your computer. You're testing out what you're going to do to the larger data set to see how it works and make sure everything works correctly. And then you have your map reduce mode. It is used when there are multiple data nodes and the data is large. In pick execution mode, depending on where your data is reciting and where the pick script is going to run, pick works in two mode also. And to no surprise, we have the local mode. In this mode, pick engines take input from the Linux file system and the output stored in the same file system. See, a little bit different here, we're looking at the Linux file system versus the local Hadoop single node. Now, when we talk about the second type, which is your map reduce mode, now in this mode, query is written in pick Latin and are translated into map reduce jobs and are run on the Hadoop cluster. Now pick runs on this mode by default and if we're gonna continue to compare the two and see how they stack up against each other and why one will work and why one wouldn't work for a certain setup. So let's go ahead and look at the features. So in Hive, it is used by data analysts, whereas in pick, we've talked about pick used by programmers and researchers. So you can think of a query versus researching the data. They both are kind of similar. There are a lot of overlap there, but that is the basic. It is usually who's going to be using it and why. The second thing is Hive query language, which is a language use. So we have an HQL or a Hive QL. And for a pick, we have a pick Latin, which is a language used for pick. Now, the third feature is Hive works on a structured data. It does not work on other data types. This is very important. This is one of the key difference between them because pick work on structured, semi-structured and unstructured data. And you can think of it in this way. Hive is great for querying a database, tables and columns and rows. Where pick when you start getting into word counts and analyzing. In this case, Facebook posts or posting that people have written, you start getting into the needs for something like pick Latin, which does a little more and different than the HQL or Hive QL. Now the fourth feature is that Hive works on the server side of the cluster. So anything you do goes through the server side setup. Whereas the pick works on the client side of cluster. Meaning that the code comes through is compiled and then applied to the cluster and executed. Now the fifth feature is that Hive does not support Avro and it really doesn't need to. Since Avro is the language which kind of sits and allow other languages to access it because it is a query language. Usually you send your query off and use a designated to Hive and once you get the query back, you process it with whatever you need to. We just look at the result on there where pick supports Avro because a lot of time what you're pulling when you're doing like say word count or analyzing document, this is going to go into some other programming language. And so Avro is that nice layer in between. It lets pick Latin go into whatever you're working in. Now coming to the six features is Hive support partition, whereas pick does not support partition. Although there's an option for filtering, so it has its own kind of partition, like set up with high fav, a very clear partition set just like you have in an SQL. Now the seven features is Hive has a web interface, whereas pick does not support a web interface. So you can still go into your terminal command line, but you can't log on through the internet and you don't need to because you're going to run your terminal and then submit that into the server versus Hive, which needs the interface since it's running on the server side. Then we will take a short look at the commands, few Hive commands, create database, database name that should look real familiar if you're done any SQL. Same thing, show the databases. Now we can create a table inside the database, create table name ID, integer name, then we have a string and so on. Now all the different columns you have in there, and then you can also have your row format delimited fields terminated by that. It's really important because if you don't show where it's terminated and how those things load into the databases, 
when you're creating it, then it's going to come up and cause problem down the road. And of course, you can show tables. You can see what tables are in your database. With Hive, you actually type in Hive that opens up the Hive prompt, just like you can see here. And you can do a select around the number 4.3 to 4 from them. So when you round it off, basically with that, it rounds out the value to the nearest highest integer. So the 4.3 becomes a 4. And you can select flow 4.3 from them. Now what happened here is it rounds off any positive or negative decimal value to the least integer value. So a 4.3 now becomes 4. And you can do select ceiling 4.3 from a temp. Now this function is used to get the smallest integer, which is greater than or equal to the specific number expression. Now that's just some basic rounding off features again. And these are all the stuff you're going to run in SQL. And this language looks like your SQL language, which are very similar to it. This way, if you're using SQL and your main server, and you put your stuff into the data warehouse, you can directly mirror those tables. Those databases, the tables, the columns, and even your selection, when you create those queries, you almost bring the queries straight over into Hive. It makes it very versatile in a company, very easy for the top management or somebody who's not a programmer to go in there and do those basic queries. And even somebody who is a programmer to be able to do these basic queries might use this to save a lot of times, since it is so fast to put together a lot of query lines. Now we will look at a few pick commands. And one of the biggest thing I find going from to pick is it doesn't really mirror some things. You start to see some of the terminology you might see in working with Spark or something like that. Whether they talk about backs and tuples and things like that, but it also is its own language. So it makes a little bit more of a learning curve. A lot of time in a company, you can see here, we have Hadoop DFS, put that a Hadoop command, path name, pick input for input to be moved into the Hadoop file system, and then just simply type pick just like Hive. We type Hive, so pick start the pick mode, and then you can create, say a relation equal load, the pick inputs using pick storage comma separated as, and then you have your breakups, and this loads the file from DHDFS into pick. This is very similar to your SQL setup. So we're bringing in our columns and our rows, but keeping in mind, you can do a lot of things in a non-structured data. So this is one aspect of the pick because beyond this, it gives you a chance to compare it to the HQL or the HiveQL language. And then we dump our relation one. The result from the previous load command is displayed using dump. And when you're doing pick, it doesn't execute until you run the dump. So until you've hit the dump button, it doesn't actually execute the code and then we can do a relation one filter equals filter relation one by column name equals attribute name and then we can dump the relation one filter. Filter command shows the result for the particular filter that we give so you'll see some overlap there. Now as far as logic or filtering, we could do that with the select command in HQL. You can see that we are loading the data in a very similar since this is a structured data setup. But then pick, like I said, goes a little bit beyond the SQL. So it's not easy to spin a company or individual up on pick, but it also make more robust for analyzing data and going one more level than the HQL or Hive QL. So we've covered the needs for Hive and pick. What is Hive and pick? We look a little bit at the HQL and the pick Latin. We look at the data models. We took a quick tour of execution modes and features, and we look at some commands you can use. And of course, you can always go to the Apache website for the full list of commands. Now with that, I want to thank you for joining us today. For more information, visit the Edureka website and get certified. Feel free to even post questions on the YouTube video. We will be happy to answer them. Until then, happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.